All right, Shalom. I like to say Kahalayim, Wahawad La, Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Rakakodash. Double honest the apostles and elders of Great Mills do not rule well. Peace and blessings to the Akimoni world that pushes through to the four corners of the earth. Right, this brother Yahweh here. I said I'll do a short video entitled it, um, Distractions Hinder Faith. Right, because you know the scriptures constantly talk about running a race, you know, and about not being distracted. You understand it? it, it talk about things like looking back you understand they that look back is not fit for the kingdom of heaven right you go into a few precepts and you have a reason why when it, as the scriptures say you say all things are written a four time were written for our learning they have a reason why the scriptures just warn us so much about distractions you understand and distractions come in many forms even and even entertainment when you look at the you know the backgrounds of entertainment it goes back to distraction Distractions could be women. Yeah, the sun could women is a big distraction to men of the Lord. That why you'll see a lot of a lot of men of the Lord they usually had their wives removed in the sense of even if they had wives they didn't have time for them. Or sometimes the the wife was literally removed. You understand? Because the women are a distraction. Sometimes things like wealth is a distraction. That is why you'll see the Lord even told the disciples to give up everything that they had. You understand? The Lord, when you come into the truth, the Lord is separate from these distractions. Right? The Lord does separate you from these distractions. Um First Corinthians um First Corinthians seven verse thirty five say and this I speak for your own profit, right? Not that I may cast a snare upon you, because most of the things that the apostles used to write, it was for what? It was for men's benefit. Just like how you see the apostles that we have today, they give us advice, not because, you know, they just want to tell you what to do, but because they're seeking your best interests. You understand? Their job is to look out for the ones that are under them. And the apostles, 12 apostles back then, we were no different, right? They say, and this I speak. For your own profits, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, and that ye may attend up upon the Lord without distraction. Because you know how um, the scriptures talk about, I think there's a bishop only having one wife. You understand that he may remain blameless because if he had three, four, and five wives, you understand that would have been that could have been a distraction to him. Because he had to invest so much time in them women that he wouldn't be able to have enough time to deal with the men under him. You understand? And all the responsibilities that he would have. Because these things are a distraction. So it has certain guidelines the scriptures has give you. So that you would know, you know, like, because as some of them as a person, you doesn't know your own level. You might think you could handle something. But it's only the Lord that's really know what a person could or can handle. So the Lord has even put guidelines in the scriptures so you'll follow, you understand, and be able to deal with things a certain way. Because your distractions is messy up. Um, I'll read Matthew 14. Matthew 14, I'll start from, from 25, right? I'll start from 24, Matthew 14 from 24. It say, but the ship was in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary, right? So there was on a ship, the disciples was on, with Mashiach on a ship, and, you know, the, it was rough, and the, the boat was, the boat looked like it was in a terrible case. And in the fourth watch of the night, Mashiach went unto, unto them, walking on the sea right so he was actually walking on the sea itself and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea they were troubled saying it is a spirit and they cried out for fear <laughs> right so it was it was imagine it, it was a, it was a, it was a spooky sight even for them who are accustomed to seeing miracles so imagine the sight it would have been for us who not accustomed to seeing miracles on that level you understand? It say, but straightway 
Mashiach speak unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. Right? So even he was like, 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 like testing him and I said, to see if it's really you. And it's not some spirit, you know. Let me come on the water. But you know that was put into him to ask because he was supposed to fulfill that, that walking on the water and falling in and all that kind of stuff. And that is, that is something that, that some tutors just never get. They don't understand that these things are ordained. They might think that when somebody do something, they just do it. But the Lord just put it in you to do these things because prophecy must be fulfilled, right? Right. Verse twenty nine. You say, and he and he said, come. Right. So he get he get he get he he get he say, right. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water. To go to Yahushai. So you see that he had faith because if he didn't have faith, that means he wouldn't have been able to walk on the water in the first place. Right? So he did have faith, he did believe. Right? It says, but when he saw the wind bolsterous, right? He was afraid and began to sink. You understand? Because he's seeing him, he already understood what was going on. But what he started to get distracted, he started to look around. He started to see the waves looking frightening and it started to interfere with the feet. You understand? That way the scripture just talks so much about, about keeping your eyes single. You understand? On that narrow keeping yourself on that narrow path and keeping your eyes single. Because the minute you start to waver left and right, yeah, that will start to hinder your hinder your feet. And that is a serious thing. It's very easy for a man feet to be interfered with. It could be by meddling in certain things. It could be by being distracted by certain things. Because it, it, Satan has come in subtle ways. You understand? Because that is his job. That is what he's good at. You might be doing something off and you're trying to convince yourself that what you're doing is not so bad. And that by itself could interfere with your faith. Or it could lead to that and lead to that some way going down if you're not careful. You understand? It's real easy to stumble when you're living in a land full of transgression. And everything is everything in the land promotes transgression, and it also has spirits on people that is try to that is try to get you to transgress. Yeah, the son it could be any form of your wife, it could be some family, sometimes your children, friends, you know, people in society who you just work with, wherever it has spirits on these people that is try to get you to be in their bracket. You understand all of these things. This lead to distraction, and that will eventually interfere with your feet. That why that why you say when you when you, when you come into the truth, the way you have to do you have to separate yourself. Because all these things is leading to, lead to it in different ways. Let us show you how 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 um how circumspect it is how to be in this walk. Sometimes it could be certain situations you're going through in life that might hinder your feet, right? Like what to talk about here and um. In Mark, um, in Mark, I'll start from um, I'll start from sixteen, right? Mark 4 verse 16 and say, And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, right? They didn't properly ground themselves in what they believe, right? They really build up the self in it. And so endure, but for a time afterward, when affliction and persecution arise, it for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And that is our next, way, that is our next thing that has hindered men's fate going through persecution and affliction you know a lot of men just fall off for reasons like that because they want to be distracted on about the things that you know they're going through in life and all of a sudden because of that distraction now because they was comfortable before they was comfortable they was getting this and that and now it, it tougher to get these things so now they're, they're drawing all the attention now to try to get back that that which they lost Instead of focusing on the on the ultimate task at hand, 
right? There are many different ways that distractions has come, in, has come to you in this shoot. And you just have to try to be mindful. So look here, this. And you just have to try to be mindful of all of these different ways because it have Satan real creative, right? It say, um, verse 18, it say, And these are they which are sown among thorns, which has hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceit, the deceitfulness of riches, right? Which are this is the next type of destruction. And the lust of other things enter in and choke the word. That even why you see the apostles as tell men, hey, don't be on this kind of rap Israelite thing. Why? Because that is that is that is trying to that is merge too much of things in the world with things in the truth. It's true, yes, not because in the truth I mean they can't listen to music or watch movies. But don't try to incorporate the things of the, of the world into the scriptures. You understand? As I just make the example, I say if if, you have, if if a wife have a husband, and she tell it, and she say, and he said, cookie food with salt, just cookie food with salt. Don't want to cookie food your own way, and then want to tell him he should eat that. It don't work that way. You understand? The Lord never tell us, hey, go and make rap albums to try to bring people in. He said, go on the streets and teach, and that is it. Sometimes Jake's like Jake's is like to incorporate their own thing. You understand? Into the scriptures that the Lord never even tell them to do. Because they find is a good idea. Lord don't care about what you find. You understand? We have strict orders on how it is we're supposed to be going about doing things. And we had to try to do it to that standard. And some men doesn't even realize that these things is be a distraction. Because after a while you go and stop you know you're not even going to be studying so much about going on the streets and preach and teaching the correct thing but you know you want you studying when it is you bringing out your next israelite song or some foolishness like that you understand these things as be distractions and it has come in subtle ways and people and people does not realize it why because that is why they call it a distraction <laughs> When you look at a distraction, it's something that you're not a, you're not ready a hundred percent aware of, right? Right. I'll read it over. It say, um, it say, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of other things enter in, and choke the word. You understand? And then you go start to focus more on that instead of what you're actually supposed to be doing. You could be chasing money, chasing money, chasing money, and you're telling yourself, you know, you want to get this money to be able to do better with the ministry, and you're trying to find ways to bring the world into the into the scriptures. You understand? And people has actually get caught up with that and not realize that they're going off because they're trying to use the things of the world to incorporate it with the scriptures and use the scriptures to justify it, and that is a dangerous thing. That is a big stumbling block onto Jake's. Right? Right. It's saying the loss of other things enter in, entering in, choke the wood, and it become it unfruitful. Right? So that even these scriptures will show you all the different ways that you could be distracted. You understand that ways how to be circumspect. Scriptures say what well, use the wood but not abuse it. There are certain things you could do in the world, yes. Nobody ever say when you come into the truth, you can't do anything that's considered fun. But you just had to use discretion and you just had to use discernment. You understand? That way, that way you come to using the world but not abusing it. Right? I hope it was edifying. With that, I say shalom. You know, try to keep on the straight path and try to keep your mind, your mind sharp for distractions. You understand? Because it has come in many different versions. It has come in fit, tangible things, like things that you will, and then it might come in the form of people. Because it have people that has come to distract you also. So you just have to be mindful of these things in whatever fashion or form it might enter. You know, always try to be circumspect. Anyway, shallow up.